Hello and welcome to the LCTV News. I'm Medina Shahi. In this edition of the LCTV News, a Federal Trade Commission scam, the City Council approves dispensary, Holocaust awareness ceremony, sit down with Fred Hogan, and more. The Federal Trade Commission, also known as the FTC, has sent out a warning to residents on reports of people getting scammed by individuals pretending to be from the Social Security Administration who are trying to get access to Social Security numbers. For instance, the caller would say that your Social Security number was linked to a crime involving drugs or illegally sending money out of the country. The caller will then say that your Social Security number is blocked and they would ask for a reactivation fee or even encourage you to get a new number. The FTC has advised everyone that if you do get a call about a potential scam, never confirm the last four digits of your social, do not give any bank account or credit card information, and if your caller ID shows a phone number for the Social Security Administration, then just simply do not answer it. During last month's meeting, the Lynn City Council approved a special permit for a second marijuana dispensary. The dispensary is set to open on Oxford Street, right next to the Blue Ox Restaurant. Natural Selections Dispensary is originally located in Watertown and will share its location with Bianchi's Pizza. The next phase for Natural Selections is to develop a host agreement with the city where the city would receive a payment of $100,000. The city will be provided with a 6% annual gross revenue and a 3% local tax option. The other dispensary operating the city is Apothka on the Linway. Many support the opening of a second dispensary in Lynn, but Ward 4 Councillor Richard Colucci and East Coast International Church Pastor Kurt Lang are not in favor of the shop. Colucci believes that it is fundamentally flawed to rest the financial hopes on the sale of marijuana. General Electric's Aviation's Riverworks plant in Lynn secured a major contract to help power the Army's Apache and Black helicopters. The $500 million contract will go towards building the engines for the helicopters. The terms of the contract state that GE will build T9011 engines for the AH-64 and Skirovsky UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters. With this contract, GE is sure to secure 100 full-time engineers at its Lynn facility. Work is set to begin in August of 2024 on the engine. Last month, Shaw's announced that they will be closing its State Street location. No specifics were provided on the reason for the closing. With the announcement of the closing, many Lynn seniors felt that this will lead to food insecurity and longer distance to travel for pharmacy needs. The Massachusetts Senior Action Council and Ward 5 Council are working to develop a plan that will provide transportation to grocery stores for residents. The closing also leaves a void for pharmacy because the Shaw's pharmacy is used frequently by many residents. The city of Lynn also suffers from a grocery store gap. Lynn is ranked 8th in the state, according to the Massachusetts Food Trust. Residents filled in at North Shore Community College to raise their concerns on changes being made by the MBTA during the MBTA forum. Main concerns for the MBTA riders were the proposed changes to bus routes and higher fares on the different bus stations. The no-cost proposal outlined by the MBTA was put forth to update and modernize approximately 63 bus routes, which includes many in the North Shore. With this proposed change, residents worry about how they potentially will get to grocery stores, such as Market Basket, due to the closing of Shaw Supermarket on State Street. The proposal would increase services on the 459 bus and eliminate services 448 and 449, which run into Boston. Under the planned proposal, services on the 435 and 436 would eliminate the Pine Hill stop in Lynn, which would have an effect on the residents in that neighborhood. Residents would also like to see an increase in the service with the 441. During the forum, residents suggested that the blue line be extended to Lynn, a topic that has been discussed for several years. One resident even said, the infrastructure is there, so let's get it done. On Tuesday night at approximately 10.59 p.m., a Lynn man was shot and killed on Elm Street. 29-year-old Vanerick Tube was pronounced dead at the scene when the police arrived. No arrests have been made yet, and the shooting remains under investigation. LCTV will keep you updated with the latest details as they come in. A Lynn massage therapist was sentenced to 9 to 13 years in state prison after being found guilty of sexual assault. 50-year-old Alexander Osher was found by Middlesex Superior Court jury on Monday of rape, assault with intent to rape, and two counts of indecent assault and battery on a person over the age of 14, according to the Middlesex District's attorneys. According to prosecutors, between December of 2016 and January 2017, Winchester police received complaints from multiple women that Osher inappropriately touched them during massages. On Tuesday, February 5th, Mayor McGee gave a State of the City address. LCTV carried out the speech live. Here is a snippet of Mayor McGee's speech. Especially thanking our dedicated city employees, the men and women who continue to work hard to ensure our residents get the services they need and deserve. Despite the constraints that come with financial struggles we've been facing, 
Thank you for your hard work and commitment and the job that you continue to do to represent and support the citizens in the city of Lynn. A little over two years ago, I opened the book to write a new chapter in my commitment to our city. I decided to run for mayor. In the months and weeks that followed my decision, I talked with residents about a shared vision for the city we all believe in. Over the course of 2017, I was reaffirmed in my beliefs about Lynn. We are a city of promise and opportunity. We are a city with rich and vibrant history. We are a city made stronger because of our diversity and our people. And more than anything else, Lynn is a city worth believing in. Since my swearing in last year as your mayor, I am confident than ever in those beliefs. Working with residents across the city from Linfield Street to Broad Street to Walnut Street, I see a community that comes together and works to improve our city for everyone. And because of that, the state of our city is strong. Frederick Douglass, who for a period of time called Lynn home, once said, we have to do with the past only as we can make it useful to the present and the future. As we continue to find ways of, out of our financial struggles we face, this quote rings true. While I have no doubt our city is strong. To watch the full State of the City Address, visit lynntv.org. Drivers for Greater Lynn Senior Services have threatened to go on strike if they are not provided with a new and fair contract. LCV, LCTV sent a crew down to Gliss to speak with the drivers. On January 29th, Teamsters Local Union 42 held a visibility match outside of Greater Lynn Senior Services to bring awareness to ongoing contract negotiations between them and Gliss. Local 42 represents employees who operate the ride through Gliss. We spoke with Union President Joseph Benevinto at that time. Today we're here to um, let this agency know, Greater Lynn Senior Services, that their employees are fed up. They're fed up with the progress of negotiations. We've been at the table for four months now. We haven't seen any significant movement of the company. Um, they've, they've presented a, a lot of ridiculous proposals, and all we're looking for is parity with the other agencies that do the exact same work they are. We did walk out of several meetings over the ridiculous proposals, and we plan on doing it again. Unfortunately, uh, this agency is facing a strike. It's an imminent strike if they don't change their ways. We reached out to Gliss for a comment that week and received the following press release from CEO Paul Crowley. Gliss is currently in negotiations with Teamsters Local 42 around a new collective bargaining agreement for our drivers. We have agreed to an extension until February 11, 2019. We have had multiple and productive bargaining sessions and have another on Friday, February 8th. The release went on to say, We have presented a very generous package to the union leadership to bring back to its members. Out of fairness to the drivers, we will not talk specifics of the negotiations in the press. At the time of broadcast, the two sides are still in the negotiating phase. We will update this story as it continues. For LCTV News, I'm David Riley Jr. On January 28th, Lynn Classical High held a Holocaust Remembrance Ceremony in the school's auditorium, and LCTV was on the scene. Lynn Classical High held a Holocaust Awareness Ceremony last Monday in their auditorium. The theme of this morning's event is Never Again in remembrance of, in remembrance of the Holocaust. Holocaust survivor Jack Trumpeter gave a first-hand account of what life was like during those times. The Jewish people of Holland, the Jewish people of Europe, suffered a colossal avalanche of betrayal, violence, theft, and ultimate industrial-scale destruction. Jack and his family are one of few families who were able to survive the Holocaust and live to tell about it. I was one of the lucky people, and my parents were one of the lucky around 15,000 Jews who survived from a Dutch population of 140,000 Dutch Jews. State Representative Daniel Cahill expressed to the students the responsibility that they have to keep future generations safe. We are all counting on you. I know we had a couple of jokes here and there, but I can't stress how important it is for you to understand that the mantle is being passed to a new generation. And as leaders, you have an obligation to protect others and stand up and fight for what you think other people should be treated, how other people should be treated. 
The New England Patriots celebrated their sixth Super Bowl championship at the Super Bowl Victory Parade this past Tuesday, and LCTV spoke with fans about the celebration. New England Patriots won their sixth Super Bowl championship this past Sunday in Atlanta, and fans came out to celebrate with the teams. Some fans were still coming down from the high of the game. Defensively, that game was like pretty incredible. Um, for our, our team to only allow the other team to score three points throughout a whole 60-minute a whole 60, uh, 60 football game, like, it was incredible, to be honest, man. It was so stressful. Like, I, I just, the whole time, it was, it was good. It was tight, and it was a defensive battle. With this victory, the New England Patriots now have tied the Pittsburgh Steelers for the most Super Bowls for a franchise at six, and they're chasing that seventh Super Bowl. Anybody who's a New England fan knows that the Steelers try to push that in our face that they got six. How about six from one franchise? How about six from one guy? I think this is sweet because we, we straight up tied the Steelers. So, and, and some of my friends are Steelers fans. Yeah, so you better, you better watch out. We're coming for seven. This year's Patriots team showed a lot of resiliency and toughness and stuck together throughout the adversity that they faced this season in order to win this championship. It just shows that we're resilient, you know. Um, like, the Patriots really are like the heart of this city. Boston's a really resilient city and just, you know, I'm just thankful that we got an opportunity to be at another parade. Over a million fans came out today to celebrate the six, I mean six Super Bowl championship for the New England Patriots. It was a great celebration with the fans. Everybody was here. It was great. For LCTV, I'm Kyle Kabongo. I'm out of here. Fighters from Private Jewels Fitness in Lynn participated in the New England Silver Gloves at the Lowell Memorial Auditorium. LCTV caught up with the fighters to speak about their experience at the New England Silver Gloves. I just try to stay, stay calm, you know, just control my emotions and do what I've been training for, you know, what my coach has been telling me to do, just put it all in the ring. What an experience, man, just fight in front of the crowd of Lowell and all their animosity is awesome. First competition ever in the United States, boxing-wise, my first competition. Training for like over a year now, getting ready for this tournament, the Golden Glove. Honestly, I was just prepared for the fight, you know. I don't want to talk bad about my opponent. It was a good opponent, but I was just more prepared than him, you know. It was a good fight, really great fight. I'm glad I got the decision. My coach, man, just believing my coaches every day, going to the gym. I live one hour away, just being consistent. This is my seventh maybe my last time fighting in the Golden Gloves. And to tell you the truth, it hits home because I've been fighting here for so long. I used to live in the city. I used to train in the city. It's, a, it's an exciting feeling that I just want to keep this feeling going. I never want to stop. It's a, man, I don't know how I can explain it. I'm so, I'm so I feel like crying right now. Texas went in the region. Yeah, just won the Central New England. Now it's the whole New England. You're the best in New England and the best in the country. This experience right here, man. This experience right now, I just, my first Golden Glove ever, my first tournament. Man, I just want to keep this going. I never want, I, I never want this feeling to stop. I just want to keep winning like this. On this week's Community Connector, we highlight the Lynn Classical High Lady Rams Basketball Clinic. Here's this week's Community Connector. Yeah, we started doing the clinic uh, three years ago. It was, it was Coach Ridley's idea, um, and I thought it was a great idea to allow our kids to to uh, teach the, the, the youth of Lynn uh, a little bit about basketball. So they get something out of it, and um, the current team gets something out of it by being able to, to teach the kids the skills that they're learning at the same time. 
a great turnout. A lot of younger kids, a lot of fourth, fifth, and sixth graders, which is wonderful. We love um, having them come out, and, and uh, they just have a great time as, as our kids do coaching them. A couple of things. Number one, it, it shows about it talks. Uh, it shows about giving back, right? Paying it forward. Uh, to, you know, they got some help along the way. Now they're helping some other kids. Uh, it also helps them from a basketball standpoint with um, their basketball skills. Well, I guess that's yet to be seen, but I do think that one of the things that translates is they learn that because when they put themselves as coaches, they learn that they're just trying to help um, the younger kid, right? So even if they're they're um, correcting them. Right, so they kind of put themselves in the situation. Oh, like when my coaches are correcting me, they're just trying to help me. Right, they're not calling me a bad person or anything like that. They're just trying to help me get better. I think it's very important. I think it's it's important, and we tell our kids that they're role models for for the younger kids. I mean, if you're in fourth or fifth grade, and you look at a high school kid, um, you know, they're really looking up to these kids. So we think it's really important that they. Uh, conduct themselves in the appropriate manner, which with with this team and the teams that I've had before has never been an issue. I think that that's important, important lessons that you'll learn in sport. It doesn't matter if you only play for three years or if you play up until college. I think there's some important lessons that can be learned. It's special for me to co-chair. Um, I, I obviously I'm a teacher at Lynn Tech and some of the kids there ask me why I don't why I don't coach at Lynn Tech, but I think it's because it's so special for me to coach at classical because I was one of these kids you know I was walking through these halls and I came to practice and um, so it's just a nice feeling for me to give back to what gave me so much. We're really happy with a with the uh, turnout it grows every year um, and, and uh, we couldn't be prouder of uh, what, what our kids do and, and the turnout that we get from the, from the city. been doing is we do it four times so it just basically goes on our game get our game and our practice schedule um, so this was the third time that we did today and we'll have one more now for the sports update the Lynn English boys basketball team continued to dominate the Northeastern Conference after their 71 to 42 victory over Salem Tuesday night the Bulldogs were led by Alonzo Linton's 29 points and 12 rebounds the Bulldogs led by as many as 36 points in the game and never gave Salem any easy opportunities to gather momentum in the game the Bulldogs who are now who are now have 14 wins and two losses and will travel to Everett on Friday for a tough road game the Lynn Tech boys basketball team defeated Whittier Tech 59 to 49 Tuesday night at the Lynn Tech Fieldhouse. The Tigers front court dominated the game as Tech out-rebounded Whittier Tech 45 to 25. Robert Wallace had 14 points and 11 rebounds. Bubba Cisse fi finished the game with 14 points and 4 rebounds. And Kwasim Abelard also put a double-double with 11 points and 16 rebounds. Next up for the Tigers is a matchup with Greater Lawrence Friday night. Lynn Classical boys and girls basketball team punched their tickets to the state tournament. The Lady Rams punched their ticket after a 43-37 victory over Medford last week. The Lady Rams fell to Danvers Tuesday night 46-32. Next up for the Lady Rams is a matchup with Marblehead on Friday night. The boys basketball team also punched their ticket last week after defeating Medford. The Rams now 12-5 scored victories this week over Kip Academy and Danvers. The Lynn Jets improved their record to 10-3-3 after their 4-1 victory over Latin Academy. John DeFilippo, Andrew Petri, and Matt Devin each scored a goal for the Jets. DeFilippo, with his goal, had now scored 50 points this season for the Jets. The St. Mary's boys hockey team improved to 14-3 after their 5-2 victory over Archbishop Williams. The Spartans were led by Nick Na Napolitino, who had a hat trick for the game. With this win, the Spartans will play for the Catholic Central title on Saturday against Rival Austin Prep. Congratulations to the Lynn Classical High Swim Team, who won the 51st Lynn City Swim Meet last week. Carly Mendonca played first in the 100-yard butterfly, 100-yard backstroke, and 200 medley relay. The Rams also got a great performance from Jacob Lang, who placed first in the 200 medley and 500-yard freestyle. On this week's Lynn Lowdown, host Mukala Kambango sat down with newly elected city councillor Fred Hogan.
Welcome to the Lynn Lowdown. I'm your host, Mukala Kabongo, and here with me, we got a special guest, newly, newly elected city council for Ward 6, Mr. Fred Hogan. What's going on, Fred? Uh, hanging in there. Hanging in there? Yeah. Yeah, you had quite the week. I had quite the week, yes. Yeah. yes. So talk about that. You, you're now part of the city council. Let's talk about this transition that you're going through right now. Yeah, it's just I was just a regular old guy, and now i got to make decisions for the city, which I wanted to do, and everyone knows me as a neighborhood guy that I was in the neighborhoods doing things uh, for the past 25 years. Um, I'm a guy that deeply cares about Lynn and you know I had to get the votes from the city council to be uh, to be appointed and that was a very stressful stressful thing for a couple months yeah. and then um, uh, I was appointed on Tuesday, so it's been a very exciting time for the last week. What what made you decide that you wanted to go for the city council? Well, a lot of people have been asking me for years. A lot of people from my ward, from my area, and I wasn't really, didn't think I was ready for politics at the time. I was still coaching, and I, I love coaching. I love interacting with kids, and I love doing stuff like that there, and I, I wasn't really, didn't think I was ready at the time. But um, with Pete Capano stepping up to be a state representative, um, the seat would be open and people started to talk to me a little more and then I started to get a little more interested and then I started to think that there is other ways I can help help my area with a voice in City Hall. And um, one thing is, is a lot of people know that I'll be a direct line to them. They can call me anytime, they can knock on my door, they can do anything. I'm, I'm in the city, um, I'll be at basketball games, I'll be at football games, I'll be at community events. They can just come up to me and ask me what th what I'm thinking, what they need, and, and, and I'll be there for them. Yeah. Now, a lot of people in the city know you for putting on events. You, know, you started the Shoe City Classic many years ago. You have other programs that you do throughout the year, doing this Summer. So how, how do you think your ability to put on to put on events is going to help you in the city council? Well, absolutely, because now the things that I've done in the past, I'm going to expand on those and do more for my area um, down in Ward 6. I, I already have like 10 ideas, um, you know, things like I'm, I'm going to have a precinct captain in each precinct in my ward. We have four precincts, and, and that would be give someone a voice as like an extension of me mm -hmm. in, in that area. So you could go knock on your precinct captain's door and say, hey, what this is going on in the neighborhood. You know, can you get Fred down here or if they can call me and we'll meet at the precinct captain's house and we'll invite people over and see what's going on in that neighborhood. So I have ideas like that just, you know, to bring Ward 6 to make it feel like everyone owns it and everyone belongs there. And, and that, that's one of my, my main signs is going to be we are Ward 6 because yeah. I'm going to make this area feel like it's everyone's because that's how I always did things is, is everyone was included. Yeah, definitely. Two, two of the things that you, you brought up before the election that you wanted to really take a look at. The first was the Pickering Middle School. You're in favor of getting a new one. And then the second was reducing the crime in Ward 6. Talk about those a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we need new schools in Lynn. It, it's a fact. Um, if you've been in Marshall Middle School, it's a, one of the beautiful schools you've ever been in your life. And we need new schools in Lynn, and we need and we need to, to get them. And it was tough that the vote went down. Maybe the locations weren't right, um, but uh, there was a lo location on McManus Field, which is in our ward. Um, they might come back and look at that location again, and maybe they'll find another location. But we definitely need um, more another middle school in Lynn to replace Pickering, um, just or, or to, to make it a, a better, because Pickering is in bad shape. And you have to, you're still with Stop the Violence, so talk about the redux, reduction of violence that you plan on trying to redu have in Ward 6. Same thing as, as with Stop the Violence, you know, we'll expand. We want to do a little more with bringing the, the police into the community. And, and, ta and when I was younger, um, we knew the police who worked our neighborhood. Like, it was the same cops all the time. And, and they would know us by names, and they would stop, talk to us, get out of the car. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was just that way. Like, so what I'll do is I want to try to do some um, introduction to police in the community in my ward and then you know because what happens with stop the violence is we, we weren't out to um, save everyone to stop the violence we were out to save I mean, if we could save one kid or save two kids that that was the idea um, 
and, and, and that's, that, that's what we want to do is we want to just get the community involved with the police and, and make it, and that will cut the violence down right there, you know, and, and, and let me tell you, I walk my ward all times. I, I run my ward um, nighttime, daytime, it doesn't matter. Um, I think we have a great ward. I think we get a bad rap, um, but that, that's the idea. How hard is it going to be for you to step away from coaching football? You were coaching football this past, this past fall for a classical football team. How hard is that going to be for you to step back, step away from that? Well, it took me 30 years to get back to classical, obviously, because I graduated from Lynn Classical, and um, Coach Vaughn um, bring me back, and I was very really excited to get over there and stuff and get to work with, with the classical football team. Um, like I told Coach Vaughn, I would still stay on because I, I, won't, I won't take a city check. Um, I'll still stay on and, and help out in, in whatever he needs me to do in areas and stuff like that there. Obviously, I, I'm gonna, my time is unbelievable right now. Um, I've learned since Tuesday, um, I, have, I have a lot, a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's very busy. I have two phones and I have my home phone that I never had for 10 years. I had the line, but I never had a phone. Uh, my cell phone, which I, I give out to anyone. Um, my emails, um, my Facebook, everything has has been very active. So you know, but the coaching, it, it that's that's the hard part because mm -hmm. that's that's my passion. It's yeah. been my passion for 25 years. You know what I mean? So you know, it's just being around the kids. You know what I mean? And 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 missing that everyday thing. But myself, I'm going to be the guy that's I'm going to be popping in anyway. Yeah. And and I'll, and I'm, and he if he can give me a role to do stuff, and I'll I'll do that. I'll do whatever he asks me to do. Yeah. And lastly, just talk about the overwhelming support you got because you had City Hall. You pretty much had, had half a Linden City Hall the other day. Just talk about the overwhelming support that you got th from the community. Well, it's pretty funny because I'm a Ward 6 guy, but I'm a citywide guy. Um, I'm, I've touched a lot of lives, obviously, over the years, and the other day was amazing. Um, everyone came out. They packed City Hall, and, and they were just very excited. The, the ovation, they, they actually cheered out of, out of line when they weren't supposed to, and they didn't understand how it was. Um, and then when they asked um, for my family to come up and have a picture, a lot of people came up, but guess what? That's how I am. They they are part of my family in a way because either either I coached them or we did something to direct and and I I count everyone as my family. So if if you looked at the picture and you blew it up, you'd be like, wow, wow, he's related. But that's what it is. Over the years, I, I treat people like family. You know what I mean? And and uh, that was an excited when the, when the picture was done and people were like, wow, you got a big family. You know. <laughs> Well, man, good luck. Good yeah. luck with everything. This is a new new journey for you, new things happening, but we'll definitely be supporting you, and good luck. Like I always support you guys, man, <laughs> you know what I mean? One of the best things is LCTV, you know what I mean? So thanks a lot, McCall. All right, no problem. All right, you guys have been watching the Lynn Lowdown. Well, I want to thank Fred Hogan for being here. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. And now for some upcoming local events. Mayor McGee, along with Lynn Parks and Recreation, will be hosting the Daddy-Daughter Dance at the Knights of Columbus. The dance will go on from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and will feature music, games, photos, and refreshments. On Saturday, February 9th from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., the Lynn Classical High Lady Rams will be hosting a free basketball clinic for Lynn girls in grades 4 through 8. The clinic is free and is part of the four free basketball clinics the Lady Rams host during the basketball season. LCTV's next Paramount film series, which will be on Monday, February 11th, will feature When Harry Met Sally. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. and the movie begins at 7 p.m. Pine Hill Neighborhood Meeting will take place on Wednesday, February 13th at the Sewell Anderson Elementary School from 6 p.m. until 7.30 p.m. Counselors from Wards 5, 6, and 7 will all be in attendance to answer any questions or concerns from residents. The Food Project will be holding its final winter mar farmer's market at the Salvation Army on Franklin Street from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. on February 16th. Residents are encouraged to come to stock up on fresh produce for the winter. The Boys and Girls Club will kick off their brand new all-boys mentoring program on February 21st from 4 p.m. until 6 p.m. Well, thank you so much for watching the LCTV News. I'm your host, Mina Shahi. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to our website, lintv.org, to find out all the great things happening here at LCTV. Have a great day.